Um, talking about our work, which has been looking at how we can prevent the progression of prostate cancer through dietary intervention, and specifically with a, a food product derived from a kind of broccoli-based product. Well, we've been working on this actually for about 30 years, I suppose. Um, there's lots of observational epidemiological evidence that people who eat high amounts of brassica vegetables, things like bro um, broccoli, cabbage, kale in their diet, have a lower incidence of cancer. But there's very little experimental evidence, at least in, in humans, there's lots of evidence from mice and rat studies. So we're doing a, a study based in Norfolk in which we have men who have a current diagnosis of prostate cancer, localised prostate cancer, and these men choose not to have surgery. They remain on a program called active surveillance and they are very happy to take part in the dietary intervention. And the, the experiment is mainly that they, they have one portion of a broccoli-based soup per week for 12 months. And we have three different types of broccoli which have different levels of specific compounds in. Um, and at the end of 12 months, we hope to find out if, if one of these types of broccoli are better than another. And we do this by taking biopsies, and this is normal clinical care that men are under. We take biopsies before the intervention and measure how much cancer they have in their prostate gland. And at the end of 12 months, we do it again. And we can see whether the cancer has progressed or have got less or stay the same. And we're also um, measuring different changes in the metabolism and the gene expression in the prostate tissue. And from that experiment, we hope if our results are positive and we'll know if the results are, well, we know what the results will be in about the, towards the end of 2017 um, to then to do a much larger study which will involve maybe a thousand or two thousand men. But that's, that's to come. We have to get the results of our current study first. Not really. The study is blinded in that we have men on three different diets, three different types of broccoli, and I don't know what type of diet they're on and they don't know what type of diet they're on. However, we did get ethical permission to see if there are some changes from a very early group. Um, so the first 15 volunteers, um, we were able to analyse their tissue just so we know that things are happening. So we have been able to detect changes which are due to the dietary intervention. But at the moment, and certainly some men, we see more changes than others, but at the, me at the moment I can't say which of the diets that might be related to. My background is, is, at a, is actually as a plant scientist and I, I started my career working on um, kind of plant genetics and I worked quite a lot on, on brassica crops which is why I got involved in, in broccoli and then part of that was actually looking at their chemistry, why they accumulated these particular compounds particularly in terms of how they defended themselves against pests and diseases. And I uh, spent some time collecting wild brassicas from particularly around the Mediterranean and, and we did some, collected some particularly interesting ones from Sicily. And I began using those in a breeding program with broccoli and that started, I think the collecting was in 1983 and uh, my main breeding work was in the early 90s. And then it was in the early 90s that the first information became available that there seemed to be an association between um, reduction risk of cancer and people who had high amount of these, these particular vegetables. And so my interest began to look at the link between plant chemistry and human health. And I suppose over the next 20 years, my research group has kind of moved from doing plant genetics, which we don't do any of anymore, into doing kind of human genetics and, and uh, human nutrition and cancer biology. So it's been a bit of a journey. However, whether you're dealing with 
um, human cancer biology or plants, at the basis of it is all genomics. And so whether we're dealing with plant DNA or human DNA, it is actually much the same. Plenty, I mean, the conference has been, been excellent. Um, it is still amazing to me that with the, our aging population, the challenges within the NHS, uh, and also our advances in the diagnosis and detection of cancer, we don't have more investment in cancer prevention and stopping early cancers from progressing. So this is a really interesting conference. It's bringing together people from all sorts of different disciplines. Um, the work on aspirin, metformin, very, very, very interesting. Um, so it's a great conference. The organisers have done a great job. But again, I'd like to see the government and um, other charities putting more money into stopping cancer progressing at the early stages rather than just trying to deal with late stage disease. Mm -hmm.